Welcome back everyone. At this point what we're going to be talking about is working with layer styles. And there are a number of places that you can access layer styles. As you'll see, we'll access them through the layers window, the little effects icon right here. And there's also a styles window that you can access as well, but we'll get to that in due time. To start with, I want you to choose to create and as you can see here, I've got just this light brown color. It doesn't really matter. You can go to your swatches. You can choose any color in particular that you would like. Um, and what you'll notice is that once we apply some of these styles, well, these colors are not really going to be all that applicable. But nevertheless, choose a color, whatever color you like. And you'll notice here I'm going to take from the vector drawing tools. Well, let's just take one of these rounded rectangles and if you remember from the lessons on vector drawing I'm just choosing to create as you can see here a very basic shape layer so I've got the shape layer here's a rounded rectangle I can hold shift if I want to make a perfect square or I could just actually make a rounded rectangle so what you can see here in your layer palette we've got the shape layer that we created simply by choosing this option here when using the drawing tool. Now if you're working with everything at default which is exactly what we have here then all you've got is a little icon showing you the color and you'll notice there's a little line around it but if you remember once we click on the stage and deselect that particular item again because I'm using auto select layer if I click on the stage here I'm deselecting the item and we don't see that little path around it. So let's just select this item right here and what we can choose to do at this point is to click on the effects little icon right there and you'll notice that there are some effects. Now we're not going to talk about blending options right now but we will talk about things like drop shadow. Check it out. If I come in here and I click on drop shadow what it now shows me is that I'm going to have the option of applying a layer style. I can choose to make this active or inactive. And you can see just by doing that what happens in the live update on the stage in your canvas right here. Well you'll notice that we have some drop shadow information and there's a preview that's going on here. You can uncheck that preview if you wish. However, as you'll see here we're working with black which is set to multiply mode. Now Multiply mode is going to help it to create that overlay effect that we see here. Now if this was in normal mode, it wouldn't really show up all that different because it is sort of blurry and it is sort of made opaque as you can see here. So we can slide this back and forth. I'm going to keep it at multiply though. And as you'll see if you slide these things, it's a great way to sort of get your head around what exactly is happening and more importantly it allows you to fool around with the basic settings because when you're working with layer styles you don't want to be too obvious with them you don't always want your shadows and your angles to be in a certain direction or have the opacity always set to you know the default which is a fine but you know it's okay to fool around with these and it's okay to mess with them notice this the angle is indicating the light source on this particular image so as you can see here if the light source was coming from the left hand side it would be casting a shadow that would fall on the bottom of the right hand side now if you wish you can move that around check it out. If I move it over to this side you can see that now the light source is coming from here casting a shadow there. Just as easy as doing this. If I put it exactly straight up for example I can say 90 and you'll see that the drop shadow is reacting as if the light source was coming directly from the top. Now what about the distance of that particular item? Here I'm just going to move it over here so you could see it being cast this way you'll notice the distance indicates well how far from the ground is my object in other words how far is it casting this shadow so as you can see if I really exaggerate that that's way far away or I can bring that even closer as we see here also notice that you have something called spread which is you know doing what you might imagine it would do and the spread will indicate how far your gradient 
is created. Or in other words, you see sort of like a fuzziness around that area. And here I'll just move it out like that. The spread indicates, as you can see, exactly how much of that you've got going on here. And there are times when you don't want to have any of that. And if you just keep it down at zero, you'll have something close to what the default is. If you increase the size, you can see how that blurriness is really going to be affected here. So even if you have the spread at zero, if you decrease the size to zero as well, well, that is going to give you a much cleaner edge to your drop shadow. So you see, no matter where you end up creating that drop shadow, uh, this one is instead something that is not as, now notice this. See, I, if I could put the opacity to 100%, you'll notice that, of course, it's not as fuzzy as it was before, and it's giving you a harder edge. So that's a little bit about working with the drop shadow layer style. Let's come back, and we'll explore some of the other ones as well.